Welcome to uh, uh, Cultural Psychology. I am Dr. Herb again, and uh, this is an ITV class, tape class. Nothing like warning, the light just comes on, and here we are in class. So uh, let me uh, talk a little bit about today. This is our first class, and uh, we will, uh, this class I've, I've taught about seven times. This is the seventh time I've taught it, um, and it's really a fun class. Many of you will discover this is one of the most fun, interesting class you've had, you will have at the university. And one of the reasons is we kind of talk to each other and with each other and about each other uh, in terms of our ethnicity, our cultural heritage, our race, uh, and things like that. And some of y'all are just grinning. Uh, why don't you turn it on this class so everybody can see who's here and I can laugh at them. Is there a camera? There's not a camera up there? Oh, there they are. That's it? That's all we have? Oh, that's all we have. Okay. Well, I'll get you later for being on here, um, grinning at me. So, uh, I'm a psychologist in private practice. My daughter calls me half a psychologist, which is a psycho. It's really cute. And um, I actually do counseling on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I've been out here teaching Tuesday and Thursday. I'm what's called an adjunct professor which means when they have so many classes they don't know what to do, they go get people and do contract labor. And uh, so that's what brings me here. I, I was, uh, went to the University of Texas, got a business degree uh, back when the Earth's crust was cooling for most of you, which is uh, graduated with a 2.013 in general business. And uh, so it's kind of fun for me to be a, a doctor of psychology and teaching at a university. You can only imagine how one gets there. But 20 years from now, 30 years from now, many of you will be at places you don't know now. Um, th I got to tell you this joke, and this is the people on TV that like this. This, because uh, I, I speak different places around the country in different settings from time to time, and uh, people, whenever a psychologist shows up, particularly like at a business lecture or a church or you know temple lecture or something, uh, everybody looks askance, and because psychologists are known to be a little weird. And, uh, but there's this story, and are you on the air? Oh, you're not on there, okay. Uh, this is Nora right here, but we'll look at her in a minute. <laughs> uh, but there's a story of this psychologist who took a three-week sabbatical work vacation down into the heart of the Amazon to visit this tribe of cannibals and uh, you know, to study their habits, their behaviors, their rituals, their culture, as it were. And so after he was there a couple of weeks, the chief, who he got to know pretty well, told him, he said, you know, we, we're cannibals, but we have a modern um, uh, marketplace, just like a Randall's or uh, Kroger's or something like that. We have a modern supermarket. He goes, really? Down here? He says, well, you know, we're not as primitive as you think. He said, would you like to see it? We don't show it to everyone. But he said, well, yeah, I'd like to see it. So they go in, this, in the dark jungles of the Amazon forest. You know, they take up the little trails, and sure enough, there it is. It's this big supermarket, and they walk inside, and one whole side, you can imagine, cannibals is just a meat, is meat, meat market, and human meat, because they're cannibals. And you got your thighs, and your rump roast, you know, and your <laughs> fingers, I guess, chicken fingers, or people fingers. And, uh, and this guy, is, you know, they're all in these coolers, and he's kind of like, man, this is really an advanced culture of cannibals. So he comes to the end, and uh, he, uh, he comes to the section, it's human brains. And sure enough, right in front of him, uh, this first section are physician brains. And they're like two ninety nine dollars a pound. And then section over there, it's uh, lawyer brains. And these are like five ninety nine dollars a pound. And there's another section that's accountant brains, and they're like seven ninety nine dollars a pound. And then up in this corner in this small section, are psychologist brains, and they're like fifteen ninety nine a pound. And being a wise UT graduate, I'm sure, he thought, wow, that, that's really the disparity of the cost with uh, psychologist brains. And so he's walking away from the um, meat market with the chief, and he says, man, that's, uh, that's kind of cool, psychologist brains, fifteen ninety nine. And the chief looks at him, and he said, do you know how many psychologists we have to kill to get a pound of brains? <laughs> Good, they laugh. Thanks for laughing, Clarence. Uh, so anyway, I'll be your instructor with uh, the little brains I've got to do this class. 
uh, th this class, uh, I inherited inherited it in the, the notebooks from uh, the workbooks that we're going to use from another professor a couple of summers ago and uh, have been teaching it ever since. And it really has to do with multiculturalism, ethnicity, racism. Uh, this uh, American culture has become a melting pot, truly the melting pot of the world, not just a northern European melting pot with, uh, you know, Germans and Irish and Italians that all settled up there. Other groups have settled around, but it's really becoming more and more of a melting pot. And apparently somebody in, educa in business, international studies, made this somewhat of a requirement. Now, I asked the class that earlier. And uh, right now we have so many students wanting to take this class. And uh, because it's, it, whoever decided that was very bright. Because if you don't understand different ethnic groups and racial groups, you're going to be out of the loop in dealing with whatever you do with your life. Because uh, you're going to be running into people of different religions, different backgrounds, different cultures. And um, I think it's very edifying for the university and for you to learn about different cultures. And that's what we're going to do in this class primarily. Um, okay, well, let me run through a little bit of what it is uh, we're going to do and then uh, how the class is going to work and by going over the syllabus. Now, those of you who are watching on TV, you can get the syllabus by checking the website. Follow me over here, Stacy. Here we go. Uh, do you want to be Vanna White and write this up there? I'll do it. Let me do it this time. Uh, is she following me? Oh, she did. So my, my website is and will be, um, hopefully, God willing, we're all here, uh, uh, u-h.edu, this way? The other way. This way. Yeah. I think either way gets you there. Uh, backslash tilde. If you don't know what a tilde is, look it up. And then h-w-a-g-a-n. My middle name is Wesley which means uh, wholeness, like a wassail. And you don't really care, do you? But that's okay. This is, my, uh, <laughs> this, is my, this is my website. So look this up and look up Cultural Psychology uh, ITV. Everything you look up for this class, you need to have an I instructional television with it, okay? Because there'll be a regular, maybe, uh, cultural class that I'll be teaching with live bodies like I have here. And you don't want to get confused with that. But at the uh, website, you'll be able to get the syllabus and the readings and all that stuff. Another website, which is uh, the distance learning website, distance education, is uh.edu. Backslash. Is that front slash? No, that's backslash. Backslash. WebCT. W -E oh, this is another one? Okay, we have three. Yes. Web. B. I'm using, uh, you know, you'll get it. Web CT. Some are capital and some are not. And you can get the information from that, right? Yes. Now, the other place, there's another website uh, that uh, you may find, those of you watching on TV are wondering when the uh, tests are going to be or when your papers are due. Um, but this won't be published on, this won't go on distant TV. But let me put it up there anyway. This won't go on TV, I don't think. Uh, 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 slash UH distance. How many in this room have ever used this? UH distance. Nobody has. <laughs> it's just a private little thing, so look it up. Distance. Actually, my um, CE. My gender class, which comes on TV, students can go find it there. If you, any, how many have taken a distance education course in this class? You never looked up stuff on here? U of H on distance? WebCT. Huh? All on WebCT? Well, really. Well, my, my uh, class is not there, so you can't find it. One thing you'll get out of the class is you'll learn how to, learn how to use the uh, Internet. And it's just a little thing we throw in, no extra charge. to learn how to do that. Okay. Um, so, I guess, let me, let me go over this and uh, for you out there in TV land as well as for people here again. Uh, the two books that you'll need is one, two sets of books we have right here. 
is a double set of books. These are readings uh, of which you'll write nine papers from these readings. And uh, these two books, you'll have to check the website for the semester you're watching to find out where to get them uh, because we don't yet know where they're going to be sold, but they'll be sold around some of the campus stores on town. So check the website and you can get that. But you'll need these books. Um, there is no text in the class for you. There is for me, but not for you. Uh, so you have, have to get these. These cost $25, and unless we're watching this thing 10 years from now, it'll still be $25. Um, and then the other book you'll need is called Owning Your Own Shadow by Robert Johnson. And really the first two chapters are the most important, and the book only has three chapters. A very skinny book. But this is a really important book, understanding about projection and the things we cast out on people that are different because we haven't accepted different things about ourselves. So anyway, so you'll need this book. And this is a book that um, students love. This is almost an essential book for those of you in psychology to understand about yourself because what runs our life is not what we know about ourselves. What runs our life is what we don't know. What we don't know. And uh, so this little book, and these are about eight bucks. Is that right? Nine bucks? Ten bucks? You can usually get these in used bookstores or order ABE books uh, on the, uh, the internet is you can get used books. And I know there's jillions of these on there for $3 or $2. Is anybody here used ABE books? Y'all don't read books, do you? Well, okay. <laughs> I read books. Every time I find a new, new book, I go there and try to find a used book. Okay, so those of you here, get out your uh, little syllabus, and, uh, and those of you who are on TV, let me just kind of read through this to explain what the class is, and then we'll move along. Uh, this uh, this tat is class will be videotaped. <laughs> well, you know that because you're watching it on video. Um, <laughs> It promises to be one of the most interesting, informative, challenging, and fun courses you may take at the university. It is a writing intensive course. It is, as that, it is designed to be taught as a seminar, meaning you will be expected to discuss the assignment readings in class. Please don't call me at home and tell me you to discuss the readings if you're watching it on TV. You actually, those of you uh, in distance education, won't be discussing this uh, with anyone unless your spouse or significant other or kids. Um, um, and then it talks a little about under, people are unfamiliar with this format in the class, but we're, the students are actually going to give presentations every day in class, and, uh, and then we'll discuss them, and then I'll give some lectures for material for the test. And then I have some videos that we're going to look at, too. And as it says here, and this is the commitment of the people in this class, regular attendance is absolutely necessary for this course to be interest and value for you to get full credit. And much of the time we'll be discussing these assignments. And since this is, we're in the brand new wing of the library in the basement, and one of the first classes done down here, this is sort of an experiment of sorts. So uh, we're glad you're joining us for it, and it'll uh, be a good course. Uh, the grading system is probably going to be 50-50. 50% of your grade will come from two exams, and 50% of your grade will come from uh, the weekly essays that will be graded and we'll drop one. Um, here, the one I'm reading to them has a participation uh, part, which uh, you won't have on, on the TV. But you will have the extra credit time, which you can bring to one of the two exams, our midterm or, la or the final exam. Um, and that is, um, if you do three extra credits, which means uh, we'll, I'll bump your grade, final grade, up a notch, say from an A minus to an A or a C to a C plus. Three good extra credits. If you do two, you won't get anything. If you do five, you won't get more than one notch. I had a student last semester that had a, a C, and he wanted an A, and wondered if he did 10 extra credits. Of course, this was the last week of class. He was bailing and stroking, trying to survive. But, um, so I, I won't do that. But, but the whole part of, uh, point of the extra credit is for you to look at movies, articles, um, of interest that are going on. In fact, I saw one in the paper yesterday, and I know this will be maybe ancient history to those of you on TV, 
but it was about uh, the women in Iraq have uh, gotten tremendous freedom right now for the first time in years and years. Anybody see this article? Y'all don't read the paper. Okay, uh, but this would be a great extra credit article for you in the class. Uh, it was in yesterday's paper. They were given tremendous freedom to express themselves, to wear what they want to wear, whatever. And uh, as the government, as the, Iraq, the Iraqis take over the governing their own country uh, relative to the um, Muslim influence and uh, the, the laws of the Koran that will be running some of the laws, the women are, f are afraid they're going to lose some of their freedoms that they've had in this brief interim. Do you kind of get that? They were lived in bondage, and now they've gotten some freedom since the Americans are, and the Western people are running it. And the American people who are running are saying, do we really want to put these women back in a bondage in their perspective? And I know it has a very positive side uh, for you know, the religious people. Uh, from, from their perspective, there's uh, a reason. For it. But, but that's a great cultural dilemma, to, uh, an interesting dilemma that women have to uh, go through. So any article like that that you see and would be great extra credit. And what you do is you'd read the article, make a copy of it, and then write a page or page and a half on the article. That'd be extra credit. And I just want you to be keen to cultural issues, ethnic issues, racial issues. Uh, uh, last semester, it seems like in my cultural class, we were talking about the people at A&M. Uh, they were A&M were going through a lot of difficulty in terms of recruiting minorities, and then as a result, they decided students with legacy, they couldn't get preferential treatment just because their parents went there. Did anybody remember any of that? Three of you, four of you, five of you. Good, thank you. Uh, well, see, those are all issues. And, you know, I'm 57 years old, and I'm very committed to use my gifts and talents to make the world a better place and enjoy it and discover new things. But, you know, this is your generation, and uh, this world we're coming into, most of you in early 20s, uh, it's, it's your world, and how's it going to be? And, and many of that is in your hands. Much of that is in your hands. So being informed a lot about this stuff gives you an opportunity to participate fully as a citizen, and those of you out and watching it on ITV also. So that's the purpose of extra credit, is to help you move your grade a little bit, but also to put you in touch with maybe what's going on all around you. Per some personal things we'll talk about in the class can also be extra credit. Uh, ways you project on other people, things you don't like about others. Well, what you don't like about them is something in yourself you don't like. We are what we hate, and we are what we adore. I hope when this class is over you will realize that. So you better stop running from what you hate and and trying to cling to what you adore, but learn those things about yourself and work on them inside yourself, and you make the world a better place for all of us. Uh, because what we don't deal with, we, all, we project out on other people. And we ask other people to be things for us, much of which we have to be for ourselves. And th that's really what this Owning Your Shadow is about. And this, is gonna, this book is going to help you in your relationships, your relationship with your parents right now, uh, your friends, Enemies, uh, th this, this little simple little book, the first two chapters, uh, will really help you a lot. Uh, and, and so I'll ask, there'll be a test question from this book on each of the two tests. One more thing about extra credit. Uh, if you go to the Holocaust Museum and write up a page, page and a half of your experience, you'll get two extra credit points. My feeling is that all students at the university it's just an important experience to see what happens when one person, when one race of people take the high ground at the expense of another group of people. We do this individually, we do it collectively. People do it in marriages, people do it in families. That people being feeling insecure, we step on other people so that we can get the higher ground. And this is as common as humankind, unfortunately. But if you go to the Holocaust Museum, you'll get two extra credits. So see, all you need to do is another one, and you'll get a benefit of a grade bump. Any questions on that from the class that they might be thinking of out there that I missed? And so, yeah, you need to type the extra credit, because we are in college. I don't want it handwritten. And then bring it to one of the exams. And, and you have to bring them by the last exam when you come to take the test. Uh, I won't accept anything after that. Um, so are there any questions, y'all, 
about that? Does that make sense? Kind of, sort of? Oh, movies. I didn't, I forgot movies. Movies are a great source of extra credit. In other words, you'll get credit in this class by going to the movie. Um, right now, the Sand and, House of Sand and Fog, has anybody seen that? They just won some awards. And apparently that's about, about a Persian family uh, moving in to redo a house or something? Yeah. Right. Well, and this may be, uh, but, but you may be able to check it out on TV, but it's an interesting movie that uh, dealing with uh, racism and ethnicity, as is Bend It Like Beckham, and I saw they got some award nominees. Uh, another great one about the Philippine culture is, Filipino culture is called Debut. Has anybody seen that? Y'all don't get out much, do you? Um, <laughs> you do get out. What, what do y'all go see? Like Lord of the Rings, anybody seen that? Yeah, I've seen that. Is that a cultural psychology? I think so. You do? Mm -hmm. You could write something on that? Oh, totally, yeah. A lot of things on it. Oh, yeah, think. because yeah. there's the strange, weird, ghoulish people. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, if you could make it happen, regard, and, and it may, may take you to, for you on TV to watch a few tapes and see what we're talking about so that when you write your article, it's relative to some things from the class. Um, What's another good one on cultural issues? And anybody think of any other uh, movies or? Um, well, I'll, I'll come up with them from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. Push that button and see if that works. Hold it down. See the light come on. Go ahead. I said, "Would the Killing Field be a good movie?" Yeah, the Killing Fields. Excellent. I have not seen that, but thank you for reminding me. How many have seen the Killing Fields? Nobody. It's about the uh, uh, extermination of the Cambodian people by the Khmer Rouge. And, uh, and actually, the man who starred in it was actually a reporter. And he died a couple of years ago. But he won Best Supporting Actor, uh, a male, in a, in a Best Supporting Role. And he had never had any formal education uh, toward acting and drama. And uh, it's a powerful movie. Yeah. Put push your button. Just talk normally. What about uh, Schindler's List? Absolutely. Schindler's List is a great movie about that. That's good. Um, there's several. Uh, would Samurai qualify for that? Yeah, I think that's a cultural thing. Yeah, it is a cultural thing. Yeah, I, I just saw that. That's, that's a great movie. So you get the gist. Get the gist. And uh, I'm just trying to create consciousness and awareness about things going on. Uh, the collective myths of the age, the stories about what's really going on within us are put up on the big screen. There was a time that people, culture, shared, shared their stories and talked to one another. And they carried on an oral tradition. We don't do, there was a time where people read, and they read stories, and they read books. We don't do that now. Uh, I have a friend of mine does uh, interior design, and they go to some of these people who are extremely wealthy, the nouveau rich. And they go to used bookstores and they buy books to fill up their living room bookshelves. So it looks like, you know, this learned whatever people in the, their study and nobody reads anything. Uh, so now uh, people watch issues on television, the media, and the movies. They carry the collective myth. Those stories on the screen are our stories. And the purpose of many of them is not just entertainment, but it's to awaken us to comfort us in our affliction and to afflict us in our comforts, to get a wake-up call to life. And, uh, and the people who are doing those films, particularly many of the foreign films now, are just fabulous films, just great films. In America, there's a great movie. Has anybody seen that? No, you don't <laughs> go to those movies. That's at the Landmark 3, the River Oaks 3. Does anybody know where that is? Three of you, uh, four of you. And then the Greenway Plaza movie, anybody been there? I swear y'all don't go there. Okay. Um, but, uh, but, but those movies uh, have independent films. And the movie In America is about an Irish family that comes. And uh, it's, a, it's a great movie. Uh, so from time to time, I'm going to throw out movies. And those of you who go see a movie or um, if uh, any time in class, bring it up. And you'll help the students watching to get some ideas. Yeah. Push the button. Well, uh, what about the... Um that new one, uh, Lost in Translation. Lost in Translation. 
Wow, what a great movie. Yeah, she just won the award. The, in it, the Capra's daughter. Right. Yeah, Lost in Translation is a fabulous movie. Has anybody seen it in here? One person. Two, have you seen it? It's really good. It's really a great movie, and it's extremely well done. And how old is she? 27, 28? The woman who wrote the thing and put it together. Yeah. Yeah, she's in her 20s. Yeah. And then somebody asked her about it. Well, what do you got, what do you got in the hat next? What do you, what's your next writing? And she says, you know, I'm not going to do that. I just love this. She says, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to see what rises up within me and, and make another movie out of that. I'm not going to just try to feed the stardom and the success. And I thought, thank you very much, because we don't need any more junk stuff. But she's obviously a very talented person. And, uh, yeah, so Lost in Translation, it's a great show of uh, cultural issues and age issues. Because I think it's a younger woman and an older married guy, and they meet and become friends. And I won't tell you what happens. But uh, it's a very, very powerful movie, and uh, that'd be a great story. Okay. Now, two, there'll be two exams in the class. And those of you on TV, on the TV class, you'll need to come watch, uh, uh, take the test on Saturday mornings, and you'll have to check the websites to see where to come take them and when. But it'll be midway through the course and then at the end of the course on uh, two different Saturdays. And uh, you'll just have to, you know, check in the website because it'll differ from semester to semester and room to room on campus. But you'll come in Saturday and take it. And... Uh, the two exams will be nine short answer questions based on my stimulating, informative, highly transformative lectures that I give. They're looking at me like they're on drugs. <laughs> and, uh, and so that, that'll be your test. Um, now for the essays. Um, let me talk about the essays and how they will go, and then I'll turn it over to Nora, tell you about WebCT. Uh, you'll get a list, and those of you on TV need to look on the website. And I guess this is on WebCT also, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, this is everywhere. And you'll get the list of the uh, articles to read. This is all explained in the syllabus. And the Astrid article, the one with the asterisk on it, is the one you'll have to write a paper on. And that paper will be due at 11.55 p.m. the night before the date that it's due for class. In here, we know that because we're going to have class. Uh, uh, the distance ed students, you won't have a class. But you still need to turn it in then because somebody's going to have to grade them. And we want to spread them out and have that. If you turn it in past that time, it, it, you won't be given any credit for it. You're, we're going to write nine papers and we're going to drop one. So if you want to just skip one, that's fine. But uh, we won't accept any late papers after 11.55 p.m. on the night before the deal. Just clears it up, simple, straight to the point. And we're going to save trees because we're not going to have any hard copy. We're going to go straight through WebCT. Now, before we, uh, Nora talks a little bit, let me say this. Um, the articles will be found in this, these books, and they're in order. Uh, pretty much in order of what you're going to be reading. Uh, in order for you to stay up with the class and the class discussion, we ask you to read all of the articles. There's usually three, sometimes two articles that you're going to read. And they are, are interesting. Some are more interesting than others. Or let me put it this way. Some of them are less interesting. But most of them are very interesting regarding issues of uh, uh, cultural diversity, ethnicity, racism. And, I, you know... I'm still stunned and shocked at some of the things that we that we discover about uh, that the research has discovered about the this country and the way that our cultures and and uh, are blending or not blending issues at hand that we have to deal with and uh, and these articles are all have a little bit of a provocative, disturbing agenda to them, so it gets us to think. So uh, that's all part of it. And you'll have some great presentations from the students in class. Okay. Essays. This is the back of the syllabus thing. And uh, you'll be expected to write a short essay a week. So basically, um, it won't take long for you to get through this. Uh, you're going to write 
one essay a week, one and a half. Actually, it can be two to three pages because you can't get it all in one and a half. Double space, all this is on here. And in the essay, you'll summarize the readings of the assigned for, for the particular class. And we just want to see that you know how to write and write well, uh, you know, adequately uh, language skills, uh, and that you understand the information. Then you'll include your opinion or reflection about what uh, showing that you have read the article, like what do you think about it or feel about it or what's your opinion of it. And then three thoughtful questions for class discussions, which show that you understand the article too. And each uh, paper you can get 10 points, and you'll get four points for the first part on summarizing, and three points for your opinion uh, to say, I think it sucks. It's not really an opinion. To, uh, but, but if you say I disagree with the article and this is why, uh, or I think this perspective is totally wrong, fine. But, but then describe a little bit why you think. What is the author missing? What other things would you have liked to have talked about? So you get three points for that and then three for each of the questions formulated. Okay, and that's how you can get ten points for each paper that you do. And then it'll be sent back through WebCT. For those of you who writing is a second language, or if you just want help on your writing skills, you can run it over to the social work building on campus to the writing lab, and they'll read it over and maybe change some dangling participles or add some things for you. Uh, and again, late essays will not be accepted. And where you have two asterisks, asterisk, uh, pick, choose one of them a few of the time. Okay, uh, and these are going to be submitted via WebCT, and Nora Frankian, the world's greatest TA, is now <laughs> going to explain that to you. Um, Stacy, is Stacy here? Do you want her to move over here? She can stay right there. Here's Nora. Give her a big hand, class. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. WebCT, the website's on the easel, it's www.uh.edu backslash WebCT. Uh, basically, you go to that website. If you're a new user, there are instructions on how to access a user name and a password. If you're an old user, you can use your same username and password. So once you have that, there should be an icon after you've entered into the database of a link to the class. So you click on the link and everything should be available to you. I've put together something for mail so that if anybody has a question, you can post it and everybody will see the question, the question and if anybody has an answer, that you're w welcome to submit that as well. Or if you have a question for Dr. Agan, you can do it through that as well in addition to his personal email. So if it's a general question, it would be preferable to do it through the mail, through WebCT, but um, if it's personal, of course use his personal email address. Also, there is a link to assignments, and the assignment just is just the, the list that Dr. Egan went over um, previously, indicating what articles you're supposed to read, when they're due, and things like that. So that's on there. Also, there's an assignment drop box, which is where you submit your papers. And you don't need WebCT to write the paper. You need WebCT to access the information in order to write the paper. You write the paper using Microsoft Word, and you upload the file just like you would a, an email uh, attachment. So, and it's, it's self-explanatory on the website, and there are courses uh, you know, on U of H and also through WebCT that you can use in case you have any kind of complication. And let's see, there's also a link that I created for your grades. You can access your grades. It's self-explanatory as well. Click on that, and you can just quickly see what you've earned for each assignment and also for each um, exam. There's also the syllabus on WebCT. So if you have any questions, if you don't have a hard copy of it, that's fine. You're able to access it on WebCT. And there it is. <laughs> and got a show here. And uh, it's it's pretty basic. There really isn't much more to it than the assignments and information that you need. So and there should be a link to Dr. Agan's website as well which I'll put on there for you. Right. And yeah, and those on the, on the internet, I mean on the, who are watching these uh, videos, um, th there'll be a TA every semester, and it may be Nora, it may be someone else, but uh, there'll be a, uh, it'll be, your name will be on the website, right? The TA's name will always be on the, not on the website, on the WebCT site? 
No, I can. I can. Well, I mean, if they want to ask a question, they can. They ask on email. Can they email the website? They can. E they can email the website, and then whoever's seeing can respond. Right. Right. You'll so. respond, or I'll respond. Right. To it. Okay. Right. That's good. Cool. Um, let's see. Uh, any questions in class about the WebCT? Is everybody doing it? Yeah. What is your name? Shapur. Shapur. Yeah, First name? Yeah. Shapur. Yeah. What a great name. You said that there would be a link to it. Push the button. Uh, you said there would be a link to it, just like like a math class or a, any science class. Right. Or just like any other WebCT course, it's going to be the exact same thing. You said it was going to come up today because it's. I it, it should it should come up today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There were a few students that were able to access it today, so. You you know. I just th thought of something. If somebody speaks, the person next to them reach over and hold it down. You with me? <laughs> if somebody speaks, like Sapor when he was speaking there, you you ought to hold it down so he can just talk. And uh, there, there's a brief pause to get the for the voice to activate. But is that sort of fair to do? Just see what we're trying to do is create a production here uh, that is rational and makes sense and not that we're going to create this live class totally but do, do you think that's a good way to do it if somebody has a question the other person goes hold it <laughs> now speak uh, that might be a little more uh, natural or something like that why are y'all looking at me so weirdly <laughs> uh, anybody have another suggestion on how to do that I'm wanting voice activated um, microphones, but we don't have those. So, anyway, <laughs> um, I had a couple other things too. Oh, oh, yeah, let me just kind of say what this is about so you'll know about the course. What we're covering in this class, uh, and this is in the books, uh, there's two books. This semester it's red, it may not always be that color. But what the what we talk in the first uh, the first presentation will be on uh, uh, diversity and um, race versus culture, and then we're going to look at different education slots of multiculturalism. Should we, in fact, is there an American culture, or is this just an amalgamation? Is that it? Is that the word? Amalgamation of a whole bunch of cultures. Is there American culture? See, or are there many cultures? And, uh, and then we move down here and we talk about cultural identity and we look at a lot of issues. That the great historical American uh, uh, cultural issue regarding races and diversity has, of course, been the black-white issue, the, black, uh, the, the Hispanic issue, the Native American issue in America, uh, at least uh, maybe historically, you know, the... The, the, one of the, uh, I guess everybody here is an immigrant, unless you're Native American. But we talked about last class that the uh, forced immigrants were uh, slaves brought over from Africa. And, you know, when I first heard that, I thought, well, I never thought of it that way. And they were immigrated by force. Actually, the state of Georgia, how was it formed? Does anybody know? The colony of the 13 colonies, Georgia, how was it formed? Who knows how it was formed? Anyone? You speak, you got to push the button. Nobody knows how Georgia was formed. How was Australia formed as a colony? Do y'all get around? England sent their criminals. Push the little button, what? I am pushing the button. England sent their criminals over to Australia. They banned them. Yeah, exactly. They were uh, prisoners. Australia was a penal colony, as was Georgia. Were prisoners uh, sent over here. So again, they were people, uh, many of the Anglo-Saxons that came over in Georgia, but were forced over. They were not, uh, they didn't come by choice, volunteer immigr uh, immigrants. But anyway, we look at some of those issues. Then we look at, uh, uh, we look at a lot of the black-white civil rights issues. Then we look at the Hispanic issues in the class. Kind of going through this just to give you a survey of the kind of things we're going to be looking at. Um, and then we look at, uh, there's an article about uh, biracial identity. You know, uh, what, what race do you see yourselves? How many in this class check other when they say race? Does anybody check other? Interesting, there's one person. What, what, why do you check other? Push your button. Why do you check I don't other? Know, because I don't know what I fall under. <laughs> well, what, what is your racial identity? Um, 
I mean, you're mixed. Muslim. So. Muslims are religion. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. Islamic or. Still a religion. But wh <laughs> no, where, no. where were your parents born? Oh, Pakistan. Okay. And and so you're not sure where that fits. How does that Southern. fit? Is that called Asian? What's South Asia, Southern Asia? Well, it's always either Asian or Pacific Islander. I don't know what that would be. Oh, Pacific Islander. Are Vietnamese people Pacific Islanders? Y'all press know what that? They are. <laughs> what? <laughs> Filipinos are Pacific Islanders. Fiji, things like that. Interesting. How about uh, Indonesia? What's that? Is that a Pacific Islander? Well, I don't know. But you know, when you fill out forms, you have to do that. Well, that's interesting. Uh, it is to me, anyway. Uh, white privilege is a great article about the, uh, the invisible knapsack that white people have. And I found this very interesting. Uh, uh, things that, that I, being a white male, that totally take for granted, was completely unaware of. Then we look at the uh, bigotry in motion. Some interesting articles here about uh, integration, apartheid, in the school systems. Then we look at uh, the Plessy versus Ferguson, the, the important case at the turn of the century, of uh, the 19th century, and into the 20th century, where separate but equal was allowed. And then that was overturned in the Brown versus uh, Board of Education, where they said uh, everybody gets the same thing. And then we're going to look uh, in the class, we're going to look at a Joy Luck Club film. You all can, of course, go watch that on TV and turn it in for a great extra credit. Um, and then we look at more on uh, ethnicity of Asians. And then we go into Native American issues and uh, what Native Americans have been through. And then we look at homosexuality and uh, the Bowers versus Hardwick case uh, and the John and Mary Doe case. And then we look at Islam and some of the issues around Islam and trying to understand that. You know, there's over 1,500 religions in America. There's probably three that started since <laughs> last weekend. I don't know. There's over 1,500 practicing organized religion. Many people think organized religion is an oxymoron. How do you organize meaning and purpose and faith? But, but isn't that interesting? 1,500. Uh, if somebody said there are 400 or 500, I said, well, yeah, that makes sense, but 1,500. But we're going to look at that, and, and then on the last page, we're going to look at some of these religions. Uh, and then we look at... Uh, Affirmative action issues, and then things about uh, is love colorblind and about the uh, SAT exams. The colorblind one is interesting because it used to be it was against the law for interracial marriages to happen in Virginia. And we have a court case that they changed that. Just because people were different races, they weren't allowed to marry each other. Doesn't that just seem unreal? Does that seem strange to y'all? that two people falling in love from different races would be forbidden by law to marry each other? Do what? It is stupid. That's a good way to put it. It is now. But it wasn't when it was passed. And uh, uh, it, that's a good word for it. It just seems really stupid that they would do that. Actually, the law was overturned. The loving, uh, Richard Perry Loving, it's a nice one, isn't it? His last name, versus Virginia. That law was overturned in 19... 67. Up until 1967, you couldn't interracially marry in Virginia. So you see, that's not that long ago. See, a lot of current stuff is uh, issues of racism, ethnicity are still going on. Okay, let's see. Uh, I need to. Uh, I need to uh, collect some money. And we'll have a little fun with this, defining the ethnicity of the people in the class. Uh, and, uh, and then I want to show a little film we're going to have. There's just a few people here. Clarence Smith, did you bring some money? Clarence? Is he not here? Okay, maybe he dropped. And Jason Straw? Jason? Did you bring some money? You need the books? Bring, bring your money up. What's your ethnicity? Push that little button right there. What's your ethnic background? See, when the light comes on, speak. Is the light coming on? Hold it down. Hold it down. Oh, uh, African-American. Oh. 
What part of Africa? You don't know, just Africa? You don't, you don't know. know? That's all right. Come on up. Bring your money. <laughs> See, that's an interesting question when we say, uh, how many have seen the movie Roots years ago? Oh, really? Why did, how did y'all see that? <laughs> At school when you were kids? Growing up? I owe you $5. Remind me of that. Okay. Now, who do I owe $10 to? Here, come up and get the 10 right there. And I owe Jason 5 uh, Now, let me see a couple of more people. Uh, Rose, are you here? Okay. Did Have you paid? Okay. Is that 25 Do you have 20 Okay. If you'll give me the 20 and give Jason the 5 we'll be in business. We did a little horse trading on this in this class. So. <laughs> They're buying the books here from everybody. And uh, Carolyn, she quit. Okay. And uh, who else? Uh, Pablo? Is Pablo here? I guess he's not. And then Tam? Tam? When? Did you get the books too? Did you pick them up? Okay, good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Now let, let's uh, play a little bit with the uh, <laughs> with the microphone system and just see how that works a little bit and for about a few minutes and then uh, we'll show this film and um, kind of help us get started here. Uh, let me start here at the bottom. Jason did. Uh, is it a bear? E bear? Saravia? Here, hold his little deal down. Pull that over in the middle of the thing and hold it down. So you're the producer and now he's the actor. Um, Eber, what is that name? Is it Eber? It's Eber. Eber. Yes, sir. And what's your ethnicity? I am Hispanic from El Salvador, Central America. Cool. And what's... Say it again. Eber. Eber. What does that mean? Uh, it's a biblical name. Uh, he was the husband of, I don't know how to pronounce her name, J-A-E-L, I think. J-A-E-L? Yeah. She killed this general. She put like a... <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. really gruesome, but keep going. <laughs> she killed this general? Yes, sir. Uh, he was going against the uh, God's people, Israel. Israelites, whatever. And uh, he came along uh, there... In other words, I guess uh, the Israelites, they defeated his army, and uh, he like he escaped somehow. Right. And so he was wandering through the desert, and so uh, Eber's wife, was uh, she had like her house in the middle of the desert somewhere, and, uh, you know, he comes along, and he's like, hey, you know, uh, can you give me something to drink? So she gave him some milk, you know, and he fell asleep, and then she stuck something. She killed him with like a hammer and a nail, I think. Do you share this when you go out with somebody on a date? Uh, no, sir. <laughs> no, sir. First time I've shared it. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you for sharing it. Uh, so, somebody said in one of my other classes, uh, when I was asking name derivation, that that's offensive to some cultures to ask about your name. Is that true in any culture, that it's offensive to ask about what somebody's name means? Well, he was pretty adamant about it, and I said, thank you for telling me, because if I do anything that's offensive to anybody, please tell me. Uh, but thank you for sharing that. That's that's very interesting. Um, and uh, Eric, uh, uh, I'm going to do a couple of more, and then I want uh, Nora to share her story a little bit. Uh, Eric Roma, is Eric here? Roman? Eric? Oh, Eric. Hey. And James. And James. Hey. James. Yeah, the brothers, the von Trapp Roman family, the von Roman family. <laughs> Eric, uh, what's your ethnicity? I'm Hispanic from Puerto Rico. Oh, right. Really? Yeah. You were there, weren't you? I was there. But I enjoyed on, it. On the edge. On the edge. Were you born there, or did you? I wasn't born there. He was born there. I was here as a small child. Ah. And then person. where have you? Where did you come? Where did you move to? Your family moved to. From Puerto Rico to West Virginia, West Virginia. to Houston, and here I am. Ta da! Right here we are. Yeah, and James, have you kind of been on the same trip uh, as brothers? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, they, <laughs> great. Uh, and uh, she, she remat, she remat, right? I can hardly see. Put, hold it down for him. Uh, I'm Indian. Is, is it? How do you pronounce it? Sherman. Sherman? Yeah. Oh, okay, you're Indian. Yeah. What part of India? 
South India, Mangalore. What's the town? Mangalore. Like I know it, you know. I was, <laughs> I was there a few weeks ago. God, how's it doing? Boy, the weather's terrible. But the beaches are fine. Is it on the beach? No, no. What's the biggest it's thing? It's kind of close, I guess. But. Say it again. It's close, kind of, but not. What like is the biggest thing they do there? Um, it's pretty small over there. Like, if you want to go big, you got to go to like Bombay. Oh. I mean, what do you do on a night out in the town? In uh. Well, now they have like clubs and stuff, so it's just like here. It's all just like here, isn't it? <laughs> it's like modernized. Pretty like much a McDonald's and a Burger King everywhere in the world. They, they got a McDonald's. Found that out? <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, that's really made some people angry. Have you noted that? A lot of cultures and races and religions have gotten really angry that because of the television and mass marketing and world uh, trade that uh, it's like the big dog on the block is going to express itself everywhere and uh, maybe for the dollar. Value. But th these are huge issues that have just happened in the last 30, 40 years that have never happened globally before. Uh, let me have uh, Nora share about her story a little bit. She is our Armenian, and she was in a class, one, two classes, one class. Is yours? Yeah. Two, and then at Young. Center. And what? And then at oh, Young yeah, Center. yeah, yeah. She was, uh, and I teach at the Young Center from time to time. She took a class there, but so a couple classes. But she's Armenian, and uh, she was actually the one who said, Dr. Egan, you'll be great teaching this course. <laughs> <laughs> she says, you'll do fine. So we went out and had lunch, and she started telling me how great I would be and after <laughs> freaking out about it for a long time. Uh, I finally, she's a graduate student here in counseling psychology, and she's on campus, and so I said, good, I want you to help me do this. So, <laughs> Anyway, but I wanted to, for y'all to hear her story. Some of y'all have heard it before, but uh, there's an Armenian Holocaust. Why don't you talk about that? Okay. Every time somebody asks me my ethnicity, I've been, I've pretty much been everything. I've been Hispanic, I've been Greek, I've been Russian, I've been Indian, I've been everything. So, and when I tell them Armenian, they look at me like I'm crazy because they don't know what that is. Not many people do because there aren't many Armenians uh, left in this world. That sounds cliche, but there aren't. Anyhow, um, in 1915, the Armenian Genocide occurred, which is very uh, parallel to the Jewish Holocaust. The Turkish government decided to massacre a million and a half Armenians, and they basically because of religious differences and also because of political and, and land uh, differences as well. The Turks basically, or the government, um, wanted a lot of the land that Armenians occupied, so they figured pushing them out would, uh, would have them succeed in that. Anyhow, and the, uh, there's a guy called um, Talat Pasha, and what he said was that he wanted to leave one Armenian in a museum just to show that Armenians did exist before he wiped them out. So obviously it didn't happen because the, it fell and uh, the government fell in Turkey. Anyhow, um, so it still hasn't been recognized in Turkey. That's something I didn't share last week. And it still hasn't been recognized. So the as part of the Turkish history, right? They they, they deny it. They deny it. Uh, Turkish historians deny it. Um, it's 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 a very political game. So and U.S. hasn't recognized it because they have such economic ties with Turkey. So. It's it's a big game, and unfortunately, a mass amount of people are are hurt by it. Is there Armenia? Is there a nation now? There's a country. State? Yeah, it's, it's very very poor. It used it was part of the Soviet Union, and of course that collapsed, and now they're survi barely surviving. Is it below Georgia or? It, it, or it's it? it's to the east of Turkey. East of Turkey. Mm -hmm. So. And what's to the west? What's on the other side? Um, I think it's. Iran, I think. Iran? Yeah, I should know. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Does anybody know where it is? Anybody know where Armenia is? You do? It, it is, right? Isn't it? Iran. Yeah, okay. So I know. Um, it's a pastoral town. It's a, I mean, country. Is it a lot of sh sheep farming or? Yeah, what? it's a lot of wheat. Wheat? Okay. Yeah, a lot of cognac. Yeah. Cognac. Yeah. Good. Cognac. Yeah. Good. Have you been there? I, I've been, no, I've been to Lebanon. My parents, because of the genocide, the diaspora occurred, which is a fleeing of a population to avoid persecution and massacre. So Armenians are all over the world, literally everywhere. So that's created a lot of subcultures. So my parents grew up in Lebanon. And so I've been to Lebanon a few times because my mom still has family there. But, um, and what's really disheartening about the genocide occurring, not just because the obvious reason of massacring a population, but um, 
since the diaspora occurred, Armenians are divided uh, considerably because they grew up in different subcultures. You know, Lebanese Armenians differ greatly from Iranian Armenians, from Australian Armenians, from Canadian Armenians. So trying to bring these you know, cultures together in a community such as the Houston community, it, there's constant struggle. And trying to get together to get something like the genocide recognized is almost impossible because nobody can agree on things because of different growing up from in different cultures and different environments. So, uh, is there an Armenian battle. Orthodox Church? Church. Mm -hmm. and, and do you go to that, or is it? Is there a group here? That Th there is. is. There, there's an Armenian Orthodox Church. Uh, it's in the Aleph area. And they're like. 200 people, 500 people? Well, there are about, um, I want to say about a thousand families, maybe more uh, in Houston. But the church, uh, because of the division in the sub-communities, there aren't too many people attending, and that's also a political thing within Armenians. So it's a big, it's a big ordeal. Um, Sounds like a dysfunctional family. It is. It is a dysfunctional family, uh, unfortunately. So. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Give her yeah, a big no hand, folks. Sharing her story. <laughs> rousing round of applause. Um, okay, here's what I want to do. We've got a uh, few minutes left. I have this film I want to show today, and we'll show films from time to time. And uh, when I first started putting this course together, I spent a lot of time in the libraries looking for uh, films that are appropriate to this class. And this is a 10-minute film of some kids from the Bronx or from New Jersey or something. And this is shot in the 70s. So you notice the hairdos are just totally bad or different or strange. But the souls and the minds and the uh, ethnicity of the kids are just like any kid anywhere. And uh, so we're going to show this. And the next tape, uh, I'll, the next tape we have presentation from, uh, let's see, Karim? Karim? Is that right? And uh, Josh, where's Josh? He's over there. And Mashor, Mashor, is that it? Where is he? Thought he was here. Mashor, no, you're Dial, Dale. Oh yeah, you're, what's your last name? What's your first name? What's your last name? Oh, are you gonna? Have, well, anyway, y'all, we'll meet after class, and y'all decide. So, for those of you watching, uh, the next tape, we're gonna look at the. Uh, we'll have the first uh, three articles presented in the class, and we'll discuss those. And so you'll want to have read your article and turned it in. And, uh, and then I'm going to give a bit of a lecture on uh, three ways, uh, three ego positions that people take really toward life, the three most common ways. And it'll help us kind of sort out where we are in the journey of understanding how we approach life and how we approach who we are, how we approach dealing with other people. we we'll have a zippy little lecture, which will be part of the class next time. Um, and uh, let me ask you something. Uh, th we have 17 minutes left, correct? In the class. Oh, okay. That's good. Uh, well, well, let's show this, and then I'll have a few kind of closing remarks. Uh, but this is uh, really fun, so uh, let's watch this. And do we need to turn the lights out? Like, uh, can a couple of y'all grab those? Why don't you just beam it up? Or what do you say? What's the... <laughs> My father was born in Mexico, and I was born in San Francisco. <laughs> Hello, my name is Maritza Baltadano, and I'm Spanish-American. And my father comes from Nicaragua, and he's Spanish, too. My mother's from Puerto Rico, and she's Spanish. Hi, I'm Eric. I'm a half Chinese, all-American, quarter Norwegian, and quarter Italian. Hello, I'm Hector and I'm Spanish American. M my mother and my father came from Guatemala. I'm Japanese American. My mom was born in Connecticut and my dad was born in Hawaii. Well, let's see. Um, my grandma is all German 
and my grandpa is all Irish, so that makes my dad half German, half Irish. And my mom came from West Germany, and she's all German. Uh, no, no, her father's Italian, and her mother's German. So that makes me some German, some Irish, and some Italian. I'm Larry, and my mom came over from Greece because uh, she wanted to take a trip, and she liked it here. From my background, let me see, my grandmother, she's Indian, and my grandfather's Indian, my father's Indian, my mother is Creole, and, um, well, we came in between. <laughs> Prejudice. Wait. Pre <laughs> I forgot the word. Prejudice. Prejudice. How do we feel when people make fun of each other's race? I think our racial discrimination, personally, is uh, very unfair because uh, you really can't uh, help uh, what kind of race you are, even though a person talks about your race. And when a person does um, discriminate against you as far as race is concerned, um, it really doesn't show what kind of person you are. It only shows the race you are. I think it's kind of mean because you can't help what kind of race you are, uh, what you look like or anything, and they just joke about it. Hey, Johnson, it's your turn. Well, when people, you know, joke about my, my race, then I really feel bad about it. You know, it's really mean when people cap me down, and I would like to get them back. When people make fun of my friends or me, I feel really bad inside and outside for my friends and me. Well, when people tease me about my race and they call me things like chink or jap, it sort of gets me upset and I get sort of angry. When people call me like jap or some, um, I don't like it because uh, I'm proud of being what I am. When people make fun of me, um, it kind of lets, lets me feel kind of low when they um, talk about my skin color, but it doesn't bother me so much. It just bothers me because cause it's just foolish just making fun just because they don't look the same like you do. Well, I don't really mind being called names too much. It's that, you know, when they call me Chinese and I'm not Chinese, I'm Japanese. And it really kind of bugs me, but my mom said that it's not their fault that their parents didn't teach them any better. So I just say, it's all right. Because I'm Italian and Irish, some people make fun of me because I'm Italian. They call me spaghetti and stuff like that. And I don't think it's very nice because they got nationalities too, and, and that's just being prejudiced. There was this one boy at one time that teased me because I was Jewish. I told him that, and uh, usually if, pe if people would tease me about my religion, I'd just walk away from them. You know, I wouldn't have anything to say to them, but it's really unfair to tease them about their religion. They can't help it. Besides, most people are proud of it. Some people use, use names like um, Japs and honkies and things like that to, to make somebody, to, to put somebody down or something, or they use them to, um, like if they have something wrong with them and they take it out on another person, they use, they use the, the person's other race or the person's race to, um, you know, put them down and things. Or like if, if, some, if someone is uh, mad at you and then, and then they start bringing into the conversation like, uh, well, you're black, I don't like you, or, yeah. or like, uh, you're a hunky, so I don't want to play with you, or something like that. Um, you don't really feel good because um, how they like it if they called you names, too. I feel that nobody has to be teasing nobody else. That's how it should be. I have a friend named Cynthia, and she, every time we go to the park or something, um, someone like says, black people, black people, or something like that. And I, you know, I push her and I say, let's go, because they're calling you names. But, you know, she feels kind of sad, so we don't really go to parks like that anymore, but now, now she feels good because no one else, no one, no one seems to be calling her names anymore, but they used to. I don't think people should call other people names because of their race, because the Declaration of Independence said that every, every, man, is, every man in the, in the United States is supposed to be treat, 
created equal, so it's sort of they're sort of breaking a, like a treaty, and and our, <laughs> our president signed it, like Benjamin Frank and all those people signed it, and the, so they 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 broke they broke we broke the law of doing that. I don't think he's buying it on the other side. <laughs> what is an American? How many kinds of Americans are there? Um, a lot of them. There's all kinds. You never know. Americans, Japanese, Korean, Chinese, um, Mexican. Um, it goes on and on. There's like numbers. Men. Italian. A million. Part of There's more than a million Americans. Well, like Japanese, different kinds. Korean. American <laughs> Indians. <laughs> It's right, South you American. Can't name them. I mean, this so many. Irish, I African. Bye, mommy. I mean, my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What does an American look like? There really isn't no many. There's no colors because people come from uh, different countries, and when their kids are born, they're American, but they may not look American. They may look like different um, people, but they're just Americans. Yeah, and some people like um, some people are black hair, but then they're, they're really American. They have different color skin. They don't have to be just white. They have, they can have different color hair and eyes. Americans are all different shapes, colors, and sizes. Who's the most American out of all? I, of I am. I think I am. Because I, because I look because more American. I was born in America. So was I. So, so was, was I. I. So was I. Do we feel more American? Or more something else? Do we feel more American or more something else? Um, I don't feel, I feel very American and a tiny bit of Danish because I've never been in Denmark and I don't know what it's like. I feel more American because I came here when I was one and a half and well, I lived here almost all my life. And I feel more American because um, I've been here longer than I have Guatemala. I feel I'm more Mexican than American. Me too. Well. I feel more Japanese because I live in a Japanese household. I feel more American because I do things American. I feel more American because I do things American. I said first, so what? I did. I said so first, so what? Whenever I celebrate um, any celebrations or anything, uh -huh. or Hanukkah or anything like that, I feel more Jewish or Italian. But when I don't do anything or when I just in school or in the outside world, I just feel more American. Friend! I don't care if Terry's my friend. I don't care about his race because it's sort of stupid to think about your race and to only, think it, only use your race as, a peep, as your friends. I like having friends of different races. Like me and Tamara, we're good friends. And Angeline, you know, she's Chinese, and we really learn a lot from people when they're different races. Well, it seems to me that when you have friends, like if you didn't have any friends, and you have friends from different races who want to be your friends, you should because um, they will they will play with you. And the other kids, like my me and her, are friends, and so we we sit together, we eat lunch together, and we play together. I like Sarah because she's friendly and she teaches me things that I don't know and mostly all I like about her is her friendliness. I like Lily because she's just a really good friend and she came into our class and she was a new kid and she didn't have any friends and she's so nice I decided to be a friend and I don't, I don't, if I have friends I don't care what race they are, it's just that they're my good friend. Cool, huh? Did you like that? Cute, huh? Cute youth of America. And there they are. <laughs> How many in this class have somebody not just acquainted, but somebody who's a friend of another ethnicity or race or culture that knows someone of another culture or race? That's really cool. Uh, everybody, everybody in the room has that, right? But when I went to high school, uh, when I was in high school, we had two black students. We had I guess about 20% in Corpus Christi is where I grew up. Uh, maybe 20% were Hispanics. But um, 
let me put it this way. My, the year I graduated from high school was the first year the Beatles came to the United States. The Beatles. You know, that was the group Mark, uh, Paul McCartney was with before he was with the Wings. Anyway, you know you're getting old when people tell you that. Uh, and uh, the diversity now that many of y'all take for granted. How many went into uh, a school that was primarily just one race? Your did what, what was yours? Uh, hit the little button. It was Mexican. A uh, Mexican? Where was that? Uh, San Diego. It was m mostly Mexican in the school? Most, there was two white guys and maybe three black people. How did that feel? It was, I didn't notice. You didn't notice? You had friends and yeah. got along, nobody great. Where did Dow, where'd you go? Hit the button. Dale, hit the little button. I'm from Ailey. And it was primary what? It was like Asian and black, mostly. mostly. A-Leaf is a lot of Asian people that live out that way? They got like uh, a, a lot of, a, a big Asian strip on one right. side of A-Leaf. Right. Yeah, how about you? What's your name? Sage. Sage. What a great name. Thanks. Yeah. Now, I went to middle school in, in Paris, France, and it was about 95% white and what, what, go ahead, hold it, hold it down. Oh, is she holding it for you? Or he no, I'm holding it down. Okay. Uh, what kind of school was it? It was an American corporated school, like in France, for like, uh, it was like an international school. Yeah, right? how many years were you there? Uh, four and a half years. Wow. And it was mostly white? Mostly white, yeah. The fluid corporate people in there. And how was that for you? Was I mean, it was, it's quite different, because I mean, I pretty much grew up around uh, mostly whites and... Uh, a lot of uh, Moroccans, Egyptians, people from East Africa. Oh, that's who was at the school also? Yeah, because a lot of the kids, the school I went to, a lot of kids, like their parents are like working for ExxonMobil or some right. international company. So, like my parents were from here. Well, my mom's from West Africa, but my dad's from the U.S. So, um, it's just one of those things where we, you know, just that my, my dad's company transferred over to France. And that's how, that's how I lived in France for all those years. So it was different, wow. different environment, yeah, yeah. different culture. Yeah, how many have been exposed to different countries and cultures? Raise your hand in here. A lot of different people, different countries and cultures. Yeah, I've been to Moscow, Texas, and Paris, Texas. And uh, <laughs> Conroe, I spent a weekend in Conroe, Texas, years ago. It's not very funny, is it? But thanks for laughing. You get extra credit if you laugh at my jokes. Ah, ha, ha. Um, Okay, we've got a couple of minutes to stop here. Are there any questions, anything we missed? Uh, I guess we just ended everything. Do you have my mic? Yeah, let me have your mic. Hold on. Hold on. You got it. Oh, you are? Okay, I can plug this in. Nothing like live TV, folks. <laughs> okay, great. Um, well, uh, so we'll see you next class over there. <laughs> Throw that away. Yeah. And uh, we'll see y'all next class and on TV next uh, next tape. Thank y'all. See you. Bye.